So for chapter three um, and the rest of the sections from two to seven, we're actually just going to go knock those out. All right. So the arithmetic operators, assignment operators, redirection, mixing operand types, logical operators, or string manipulation. Okay. So for comparison operators, we already did that. So I'm going to skip this. For arithmetic operators, it's pretty straightforward. Um, in the cell, just hold shift, press enter, and you can run it. Again, you want to navigate with up and down, enter, escape, right? Makes it quicker to run through this notebook. So pretty straightforward. Um, the only one that you might not know is modulus, which is, you know, the remainder of a, a division. So three goes into 10, um, you know, Three times three times three is nine. The, the remainder is one, so one's that answer. The cool one I like is bitwise. You may not use it sometimes, but if you're ever using sort of any kind of uh, bit level understanding or you know those type of operators, you might be interested in this. And a good example that um, I used in the past was this. Um, if you ever do subnetting or you're familiar with it, it's kind of confusing, but it actually relates pretty well to uh, the shifting of the numbers. So I'm going to say the shift is four. So if we start off with something like a hash, a slash 24 network, a slash 24 network allows you to have 255 uh, host addresses, and you're not actually you know allowed to use the broadcast address, which is actually 256. But so. So here's the thing. So if we have 255 host addresses and we start shifting, when you shift, you actually, you know, when you go from a slash 24 network to a slash 25, you are shifting to the right. And when you shift to the right, you get less host addresses. But it cuts that 255 or 255 host addresses into half. Now you have two separate networks with 128. Does that make sense? You're cutting in half. So when you shift, you're cutting in half. So you get two networks, right? Or if in this case, if you do four, you're cutting in four slices, you're getting less host addresses, but you're getting more networks. Why do you want to do this? It's because when you subnet, you may not have a lot of IP addresses to work with, or you don't want to give a whole, you know, subnet range to, you know, a small scope of devices, right? So you want to manage those IP addresses, right? So shifting is a good way to calculate it um, and not have to kind of, you know, think of it, right? So in this example, uh, we're going to run it real quick. As you can see, the total number of networks are 16. The total number of host addresses are 16. The subnet mass is 28, and you and actually I actually calculated the uh, the subnet. You you actually have to program for uh, when you configure the IP rate IP addresses. So if you do uh, zero, the sub the total number networks are one. The total number of host addresses are 256. It's actually 255. The subnet mass is 24 and 255 255 255 zero. Right? If you go, I believe eight you get a slash 32. A slash 32, it's 255, 255, 255, 255, and you get one IP address, right? So, yeah, really quick way to calculate subnets, right? And this is only for the slash 24, right? And past that, you know, the class C, but you can definitely go before that and kind of calculate that as well. But a really easy way to calculate it using shifting, okay? Assignment operators is, again, um, pretty straightforward, equals. You don't actually have to do, um, you know, variable equals variable plus a number. You can actually just do variable plus equals. Variable minus equals is the same thing as variable equals variable um, minus one. So it'll, you know, this variable equals variable plus two. This is the same thing. Okay, same thing with minus is this is the same thing. If you understand that, then you don't have to actually include the whole string. Just makes it a little shorter. 
redirection, um, really cool. If you want to log a lot of things that are happening on a script, um, you want to redirect those output streams. Um, yeah, so one is successful messages, so you can redirect the successful messages to a certain file, like a success file. Maybe there's errors, and if there's errors, you want to redirect that output to a error file so that now you can troubleshoot these, you know, the script and see what went wrong, right? If the script ran, you may not have access to the errors, so outputting to a file is very helpful. Um, three is going to be warnings, verbose, debugs, information. So a lot of good messages that you can actually output to a, uh, a file or a stream. Okay, And what this means is you can take one stream and output it to another stream and then um, you know, combine streams into one stream. So like the message says, uh, redirection is kind of different from um, piping. Piping is taking like an object and then doing something with it. You can't really do something with a with a, with a redirection. With redirection, you are trying to put it into a file or a stream. You're not, you know, processing it and taking an array and doing other things with it. You are just redirecting it in a stream. Imagine that sort of rivers, right? And you're just kind of redirecting where it's going, right? And sometimes you want to just redirect it to a file. So different from a piping, right? Piping is taking an output of, you know, the previous result or you know, output and then doing something with it, right? Output. Let's see. Okay, so here's an example. So when I run it, out, write output test, which again, write output test, this is the same thing, right? If I run it again, it's the same thing, okay? And um, let's see. So it outputs to his file. Right output to the file. Here's the example of the of the uh, error. So I'm taking the error, which is two. I'm combining it with a test stream. I'm appending it to the test file. Okay. And I get content of the file just so that you can see it. But it's right here. It'll actually populate here. All right. Cool. 3.5 mixing operand types. So when you mix operand types, you got to be careful about the sequence. I'll show you why. If you take a string and you add a number to it, it'll really just concat concatenate it. And if you take the same number, but you're starting with the integer, and then you add the string, it will actually convert that string to a integer and calculate it. See? So you see 42 and then 6. Okay? So depending on the sequence, you're going to get different results. So be careful and be cognizant of that idea. Or make sure just to have the uh, you know the properties or, or the values in the right format before you even calculate. I, I, I would suggest you do it that way. Don't don't do this, but know that the different sequence might do something different with the results. And it, it, when you debug, it's going to be very hard sometimes. So just make sure you know to what you're expecting for a, a value or parameter so that you know what to do with it. One, two, three, plus a low, it actually does an array. See, one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, hello. If you do it the other way and you do it as a string, it concatenates it. Concatenate. And it puts it here. And so it just adds it to the string, right? So remember, if you do it this way with the, you know, the array first, it'll just add it. But if you do it this way, it'll concatenate. For multiplication, see here, uh, same thing, you know, same flow, right? You do string first, it'll do 33. So it actually do this many times. So if you do um, 5, 10, it'll just repeat that, that string 
that many times. See? Does that make sense? If you do it the other way, it'll uh two times it'll actually calculate this. But I think if you do something like that, it won't work, right? Could it's invalid. So it has to actually be something valid. If you take an array, multiply it by a number, you're just gonna get it twice. Okay? You're gonna get that sequence twice. Same thing as sort of uh, what you saw above. Um, if you do it the other way and you do the uh, you know the value times the, each item in the array, if it's on the left side, then it's going to give you an error. Okay? It, 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 this is something that would not work. Okay? Another example. So if you get an input, so if you say variable A and you say read host, read host just means get a value from the actual user. So you're going to be asking for an input, enter a number. For in this example, we want to enter 33. And if A, remember, is if A is greater than 5, right, then return that result, true or false, a Boolean uh, result. And so we see, we get enter a number and we do 33. 33 is greater than 5, but because 33 is a string and we didn't convert it prior, it's false. Okay? Or, I actually included uh, another thing that wasn't included in the PDF, but if you do it the other way, it'll return true. Okay? Logical operators. This is going to be used for your uh, for loops, pretty straightforward, and statement, or statement. Um, the XORs, not. So this is just the logical operators. And yeah. Let's see. String manipulation. So um, again, you want to make sure um, if you don't know regular expression, I suggest learning a little bit or just using a regular expression um, generator or what the, you know, some tool on the internet that will help with regular expression. But uh, it's going to be very helpful. But in this scenario, we want to replace rain in Seattle and we want to replace it with hail. So then when you run it, the hail in Seattle. You can even do um, replace Seattle and turn it to maybe Miami, right? See? So it just replaces the word right and all the words in the sequence so if you have uh, Seattle is beautiful then it's just you know, right it just replaces all the words this is regular expression so I'm gonna break it down just real briefly when you'd say um, Ken Meyer at contoso.com you're saying that um, you know you have a carrot here and then this is a word and then this is saying um, sort of basically in the beginning we have words, right? Words are uh, letters, okay? So anything with a letter. If it has a number, that's not really a word. Or if it has like symbols, it's not really a word. And then we do a plus. This is the magic right here. This is the, the sep sort of the separator, the at sign. It's looking for that at sign. And then this is putting it into a different grouping. And um, this plus, this dot, e, this dot plus just means like a wild card f and go as long as you want. Okay? And then I want to return dollar sign one, which is the grouping in the parentheses. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's see what happens here. It returns Contoso.com. Do you see why it returns Contoso.com? Let me do this. It will return anything that's after this at sign because I put the I put this and then the plus the plus the plus symbol means go forever. So right, I can change this. I can change this to a uh, you know uh, let me see mm, semicolon. And I change this to a semicolon, and it works the same way, right? 
Let's see. Okay. What was this? Plus this one, Ken Meyer. But yeah, so let's do a word. Um, let's do something beforehand. Okay. Let's change this back to the at sign. So yeah, you, you just have to kind of know how regular expression works and you can kind of mess around with it. Um, if you do like a number, it will mess up. I think it will mess up. Oh, actually it still works. Hmm. Word. Let's see. Let's try another at sign. I think what's happening, so this will be the first at sign and then anything after this first at sign, it'll process the rest. Yeah, so it'll only do the first at sign. So you kind of see regular expression is kind of, you can do a lot with it and you can kind of parse a lot of things out of a, out of a string uh, with knowing regular expression, okay? So let me fix this so I, uh, when I save it, it's not too crazy. Um, Ken Meyer at Closer.com. Okay. Um, split and join. So split and join operators. Let's see. That's going to be something where um, you're splitting this by a space, right? And then this, it turns into an array. And then once it returns it to an array, you can um, call upon it. So uh, let's actually put this to a variable. Um, whatever, right? So it puts into that, and then you can kind of call upon different parts when it's split it. I think that you saw this on the previous example. Join is the same thing. Uh, when you join it, um, it'll join it, and it'll put this on there. It'll put a the colon. So test equals, let's do test equals this, and then test. So nothing yet, so I'll, I'll run it again. Hold shift, press enter. And yeah, so, and then you can kind of go backwards. So you go test and split it back by that, right? So that's it. Um, and again, sorry, uh, this is a little longer, but I am, merging a lot of these uh, sections together. And if you have sort of, um, you want more, you know, explanation or clarification, just uh, feel free to let me know. Thank you, everyone.